Hey everyone, Genome here. Got you with another contest entry. No, please. Yeah, that's right. I'm doing another one. I'm really having fun doing these. It's it's a real change of pace from, you know, the typical sometimes slog that <laughs> running a channel can be sometimes when you start doing kind of repeated content, even a variety channel like mine. You know, it starts to get a little stale sometimes, so it's it's nice to break this up and to answer questions and, you know, do things you wouldn't normally do on the channel. So, uh, this contest um, submission is for uh, Horror and Taj. Um, his 1,000 subscribers contest. Wow, I mean, amazing. That's 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 pretty good, man. Uh, apparently, he's only been on for like a year and a half, so he's really uh, racking the subs real well. So, uh, good deal. I was actually introduced by this channel uh, by the imitable Gray Man. You worthless piece of Euro trash. All right, so let's talk about uh, what his requirements were. Uh, the first is uh, question one: What is your scariest scene in horror movie history? And two, what horror movie would you recommend that nobody ever talks about? So there's also kind of an addendum question on there is to shout out a few other channels. I will stick to horror channels that are on the smaller side, like my channel. Uh, I'm not really a horror channel. I'm a variety channel, but so I will definitely uh, shout a couple of those guys out. Uh, let's go and do that right now, in fact. Let's start out with uh, Evil Stevel. Uh, he has a nice little kind of variety horror channel. Uh, with reviews and unboxings, that sort of thing. So that that's it's it's a pretty cool channel. I, I like his setup. He has a really nice backdrop with the red lights and all that. It looks it looks really good. And he has this really like I don't know kind of laissez faire <laughs> manner about him. I really dig it, man. It's it's pretty cool. Plus he has a good uh, outro. And I'll see you later. Um, Derek's Horror Corner. Uh, I love this channel. I've actually streamed with this guy a few times. Uh, he's I think a little over 600 subs now. He's kind of cranking him the subs out as of late and with good reason he does uh, tons of movie reviews that's his specialty and uh, he does them very well uh, he does everything from the universal hammer horror classics to the new generations of horror films so uh, he and I share a lot of the same pace in movies and a lot of our reviews kind of almost um, I'm not saying carbon copies but a lot of them kind of seem to line up the same way you know in our opinions of them so uh, very very good channel to check out and uh, I dig him his channel, his content quite a bit. And um, I also like Horror Gamer. That's another uh, smaller channel that's starting to climb up some subs. Uh, he has a really nice mix of variety, too, on his channel. Uh, he does reviews, unboxings. He started this new um, ghost stories kind of series that he's doing. Like, you know, real life stuff, not just movie stuff. Um, so he's got a little bit of everything. Uh, so he's got a really, really fun channel, too. And... Um, yeah, I guess that's enough. That's right. There's three. There's three little kind of horror-oriented channels there. I mean, there's always a few more, but uh, let's just stick to three for now. So, okay, so let's get to the first question. Oh, good times, good times. And this is really difficult right off the bat. We know, what is the scariest scene for me in horror movie history? And, man, that is tough. I will probably say that I'm going to go with the things that horrified me when I was younger because i saw some of these movies way too young um i'm gonna give two answers here because one is more like a horrifying scene it's it it was scary but this one was just completely horrifying and that's tina's death uh scene in nightmare on elm street one you know we had the big build-up of you know, Freddy tormenting her through several different dreams now. Basically, the first, you know, uh, quarter of the movie, he's just tormenting this poor girl. And then he finally gets a hold of her in the infamous spinning room scene. But it goes on for a while. Like, they tried to recreate it in New Nightmare, and it was a dud. It was completely, like, bland and lifeless. Um, this one, we have Tina, you know, getting dragged up what looks to be, you know, <laughs> upside down onto the roof of, eventually, the roof of this room, right? And there's nothing, you can't see, there's no, there's no assailant. It's like an invisible person that's dragging her up there, and there's blood smearing everywhere, and she is just shrieking, just blood-curdling screams. <laughs> Tina! 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 Incredibly effective kill scene, maybe the best in in movie history. To be honest with you, as far as the being horrifying, um, as far as the scariest scene, I'm gonna have to say, younger me 
the scene that probably scared me the most was a movie that just terrified me because I saw it way too young. It was from American World of London, and that's the scene where the businessman is getting chased through the tube, right? Good Lord. You know, through all those um, long tunnels and stuff and up stairwells. He's all by himself in these places. <laughs> And then finally, he collapses onto the escalator that's going up slowly. And then you get a nice tall, like, looking down shot from the camera. And then you see the werewolf just slowly stalking his way into the part of the screen right before he bites it. And uh, it's an incredibly effective scene. Uh, it still looks cool to this day. Uh, not nearly as scary to adult me, but I mean, just for style points and for tension, I think that scene's probably up there with the greatest. And I'll probably say it's probably the one that affected me most when I was younger. And uh, yeah, because that's how this movie in the theater way too young, <laughs> what my mother was thinking. So um, yeah, so probably that one American Wolf of London, the uh, tube scene with the businessman. So, second question is, what horror movie would you recommend that nobody ever talks about? All right, so this one's going to be probably a little bit controversial in the fact that it's mentioned from time to time, but man, it gets a lot of flack, and that is the 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake by Zack Snyder. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? What? Um, I actually just watched this, like, Yesterday, I think it was, the wife and I, uh, we were looking for something to watch, and this was sitting in my cases, and she's like, well, watch this. we'll watch this. So, I've always enjoyed this movie, and uh, I know a lot of people give it heck, you know, it's not as good as the original. I enjoy this one a heck of a lot more than the original, I'll be honest with you, you know, it's like, I can appreciate a good slow burn movie, I can appreciate themes, underlying themes in a movie that's trying to say, but honestly, I just think... If you take the overall premise of people holed up into a mall, making more logical decisions in a, a zombie horde invasion, I think this movie just was a lot better than the first one. I'm sorry, the original. Usually the original is better, but I like this one better. Uh, for one thing, the zombies are not comical. Uh, you know, I'm not going to knock the makeup effects or whatever from the original because it's amazing that movie even got made <laughs> for the budget it had. So I won't hold that against it at all. Uh, what I will hold against it is some of the comedic stuff that they did with the zombies. They made the zombies funny they weren't really a threat i mean they were a threat and yes they killed some people throughout but they weren't threatening at all really not to me and the movie didn't help matters by you know having a pie fight with them having a stupid biker gang come in who who does dumb things you made children out of like one of the cops he, he was so like that arcade scene where he's just giggling and laughing and all that and, and he was out there doing stupid things when he was moving the trucks and all that it just took a lot of attention out of that movie uh, that it should have been good there was a couple of good like people moments in that movie like um like, the most tense scene in that movie is when <laughs> the, the couple's fighting over the TV, turning it on and off. That one's wonderfully tense, and, like, you feel embarrassed for the third person watching, and you are the third person watching, right? So, but, yeah, uh, the zombies in this movie, a la, you know, uh, Return of the Living Dead, whatever, they run, they haul, 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 man. These things move. Most of the zombie movies, a lot of times you feel a bit sorry for the zombies, right? Because, you know, they were just normal people, and especially, if, like, in some of the Romero ones when they're dressed up in, like, you know, a doctor's outfit or a clown. There's a clown in, like, uh, Day of the Dead or whatever. It's like, oh, you point and kind of laugh, or it's like, eh, I'm sorry. He doesn't mean to be bad, but he just is, right? He's just hungry. These guys seem almost evil in their intent to get people, the zombies in this movie do. They are just, they're screaming, they're groaning, and, they, and like I said, they're just tearing at full speed after moving cars and everything. So the zombies are an actual threat and menace in this movie, much more so than most of the um, other zombie flicks out there. Uh, another thing I like about this movie is it's slick and polished, which usually is a detriment to a lot of horror movies, to be honest with you. But this one's not overly so, right? Because it's already in a slick and polished environment being inside of a mall, right? So it's all going to look shiny and nice and new. But once you get out of that, instead of some of the city wastelands, it looks pretty good, right? But, like, like none of the faces are really that well-known other than um, 
what was it, uh, Matthew Fruber, <laughs> who was, uh, Max Headroom was in there. He has a small role in there. And, um, but, you know, most of the other people, other than Ving Roms, didn't really have a huge amount of, you know, star power at all. So that was kind of nice. So they didn't just, uh, you know, throw a big celeb in there and make that sell the movie. That was kind of cool. Um, you know, life wasn't all, it was good for some points of the movie and for a lot of the movie it was bad for them so just because they're holed up in a nice place uh they never really made it feel other than like maybe like one five minute scene or maybe two actually the sniping scene and when they're just playing around in the mall but most of the time they didn't seem like they were too happy in there and there was always conflicts going on with the people uh, they had to band together to get the heck out of dodge to try to make it to the boat or whatever so i just thought it was a good one you know uh like i said a lot of people like to give it heck i think it's just popular to do that because it's newer and it was zach snyder um but I thought it was a pretty uh, good homage to the zombie genre, and uh, I think it kind of breathes some life into it, because at this point, you know, zombies weren't the big and popular things that we've known them to be, because it had been at least a decade, uh, maybe two almost, because since a really big one came out that people had enjoyed, and uh, I just think they did a good job with it, you know? Uh, it can be newer. I, I, I can I can dig it still. It doesn't have to all be 80s and 70s for me to, <laughs> to say it's good. So, yeah, I'm going to say Dawn of the Dead, the remake. I think it's... Uh, an off underappreciated uh, movie, and well worth a watch. Uh, much fun. I would much rather watch this movie than I would the original. And uh, you know, and I'm not hating on Romero. I don't think I don't like Romero's movies. Like Day of the Dead is one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, that movie is just miles better than the ones before it, or any ones he did after it. I think because it was a dialogue driven movie. It was a people driven movie, and that movie was just amazing. I can't wait to review it on the channel. So I'm not just hating Dawn of the Dead, you know, for George Romero trying to be an edgelord or nothing like that, because I like some of his other movies, but I just think this remake was really good and is often, I think, criticized for the wrong reason. So, yeah, hopefully that uh, takes care of the criteria, but I um, want to extend uh, appreciation for you, you know, putting the contest out there. And I'll also go a little bit further in that if I win somehow <laughs> the contest i'll go ahead and prize tag somebody there in, in the uk because i got some uh, fellow youtubers that are all over there so we can save you some shipping charges because it's really expensive to sh ship stuff to the states <laughs> you're right so yeah i'll just go ahead and price tag you know um a, a fellow brit over there if you will and uh that should save you a few bucks <laughs> and nothing else so anyway but i just wanted to kind of help support the channel it's nice to see someone break a thousand it's, it's a big milestone to get to and Glad you got there. So, all right. Uh, that'll do it for now. Uh, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more review content coming up in the near future because everyone knows if I can review it, I will do it. I will have my next movie review, which will be Wes Craven's New Nightmare, uh, coming up here probably in the next week or so, next couple days. i got to pull clips and still shoot it and edit it, so it's going to take a little while to do, but... You know, that's the nature of the beast. Uh, comic book cover of the week is coming up here in the next day or so. I have another contest entry or two to throw out there at you. And I still have to do my <laughs> music review, too. So, <sighs> so many videos to shoot, so little time, and so much laziness on my end. So, anyway, thanks again. Until next time, this is Gene Ohm, uh, just congratulating Horror and Taj. Out. Out.